Hello crafty friends, today we're going to create some really fun tags using book pages as our base. Watch until the end of the video to see what I'm going to do with the tags I make. We're going to start by tearing out a few pages from an old book. I'm going to fold them in half and then in half again to create a rectangle. This is just to create easy fold lines for when we glue them. I'm going to use a glue stick to stick mine together. You could also use double sided tape. A craft glue would be a little bit too wet for this type of paper. And then I just put the glue long ways and fold it in half. And then the short way I did it as well, just to close it off and to secure the little rectangle. If you happen to have some rough edges for where the page got torn out of the book, I tend to leave mine. I do like that look. I don't like everything cut straight and I think it gives it lovely character and dimension. If you like it more neat, you can just trim that off. Now I have a bit of a cheat on how I get these to look at uh, the tag shape. I just use an existing tag that already has a punched hole and the corners trimmed. And I just place it over centrally. I mark where the hole is going to be and then I just trim the little corners. And each one is exactly the same and it's really quick and easy. If you'd like your tags to be a bit more sturdy, you could use two book pages per tag. Just stick two pages together first and then just fold as I did in the beginning of this video. For this video, I'm going to make six tags in total. The next step for me is to do some stitching around with the sewing machine. I'm just doing a straight stitch all the way around with some black thread and I'm leaving the end threads just hanging off. I do like the look. Um, I think it gives it um, a good dimension and makes it a bit more rustic. If you don't have a sewing machine, you don't have to do this part. I just like stitching on paper. I'm now going to add some clear gesso on the side that I'm going to add my color. This will just help it waterproof a bit so that it doesn't become too soggy when I add the water and the color. The book that I've used is quite old and the papers are quite thin. You can't skip the step if you don't have clear gesso. I would love if you subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my videos. I have lots of junk journal flip throughs coming up and some process videos and more tutorials. Also hit the little bell so that you're notified every time I upload new content. Do watch for a really big Christmas giveaway that I'm holding at the end of this month of October. Once the clear gesso is dry, we're going to start adding our color. I'm going to use oxide ink sprays for mine, but you can use watercolors, watered down acrylics, anything that you have. These are the Tim Holtz Oxide Inks and this color is called Tea Dye. I don't spray them on, I just open the bottle and just throw a few drops onto each tag. I spray some water and then I use my wet paintbrush just to help move the ink around a bit. We do want it just random, we don't want it covering the whole area and we want some darker areas and some lighter areas. I dry well between each layer. The next color is called Fossilized Amber. You will notice some white smudgy markings where I dried the first ink. That's just the oxide and the reaction it creates once it dries. I tend to use multiple colors that I do in layers when I do this kind of technique and I think that this gives it a good dimension and a lovely overall effect. The next color is brushed corduroy. With the water and ink, the tags are buckling a little bit. It's going to happen when you're putting water on paper, but I don't mind it too much. You can always iron it in the end once everything is dry if you'd like it totally flat, but I do like that it adds character to the tag. The next color I'm adding is Vintage Photo. In the image here, I'm also showing you Walnut Stain, but I don't end up using that one. Because I only have vintage photo in a ink pad, I just press the ink pad onto an acrylic block and spray it with water. So it creates a liquid form for me to be able to use. And then I just smush each tag into the little puddles of ink and it creates beautiful designs on my tags. Once all the ink is dry, I'm going to add some gesso just to soften the overall look. If you're not new to my channel, you will have seen me do this kind of technique before where I put a little bit of gesso on just with my finger just to soften and give an overall, like a, what I call a misty look. 
and you can already see the difference between the first card that I made and the one next to it that hasn't got the gesso yet. The next step I'm going to add some stenciling. I have the stencil with little tiny circles that I quite like to use and I'm just going to do my stenciling with gesso. I'm not using texture paste because I want more of a soft look that's a bit smudgy. So I put a thin layer of gesso and then I use a baby wipe to smudge over it and then I put gesso on top again and it sort of allows some of the gesso to seep underneath the stencil which is not normally what we want but I want it for this um, for this project because I don't want the spots just to be on their own and bold and defined. I want them a bit more smudgy and blended a little bit into the background. I get a lot of questions about the stencil and I honestly have no idea where I got it from. I've had it for many years and I really do not remember where it was purchased from. If I do find it online again, I will let you know. Now you will have noticed that I have made six tags. I'm going to keep one for myself as reference and then the other five I'm going to send as happy mail to you. If you'd like to receive one of these tags as happy mail, then please leave a comment below letting me know that you would. And then on Friday the 22nd of October 2021, I'm going to do a random draw from the comments and pick five people to receive one of these tags. You can enter this little mini competition anywhere in the world where you are and I will post it to you. To decorate these little tags I'm going to keep it very simple and pretty much quite flat only because I'm going to need to post these out and I don't want them to be too bulky and too chunky. I want them to be able to send as a letter. The stamps that you see are actually sticker stamps that are from the company Your Creative Studio. Um, this was from the August subscription box and I will put a link below to their website and also a link to me unboxing the August subscription box so you can see all the goodies that were inside. To enhance the focal point, which is the stamp, I'm going to add some colored thread that's coordinating with something on the stamp just behind it. So I'm just going to cut a length of thread. It's just regular thread that you would use on your sewing machine. And I just cut a length, scrumple it up, and then just place it roughly on the tag. And then I'm going to stick the sticker on top of that. Once I have randomly selected the recipients of the five happy mails that will be going out, I will reply to your comment in the comments below. I will let you know that you have one and that you need to email me at shanuki at hotmail.com. This is the only way that I can let you know that you have one. So please do check back because I have no other way to get hold of you. I will also pop the names at the beginning of the description window below on the 23rd of October. So do come back and have a look and see if your name is there. This is just in case you don't get notification that I have sent you a message. Although these stamps are stickers, I'm also going to use hot glue to attach them to my tag. The reason being is I have thread under there and I have layers of gesso. So just the sticker won't adhere 100% and it could fall, fall off. So I'm going to add some hot glue just to make sure it is very secure. As a final touch, I'm going to use some watered down white acrylic paint to create a few little splatter markings over all the cards. I'm going to let it also go over the stamps. I sort of just want a nice gentle splattering which I feel connects and pulls the whole tag design together. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. I really hope you were inspired to go and create your own tags. I will have some of these tags. I have made quite a few also for sale in my Etsy shop over the coming days. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you again soon. Bye.